to add to what you're saying, right? You play, you go, you go to Auburn this weekend, and there's a lot of hypotheticals. We don't know what's going to happen, but I think everybody can see, like, okay, we're going to see how Auburn's been playing. We're going to see how LSU's been playing. Like, we may not be favored, but we probably will we're be. We're favored by seven and a half. Oh, we are favored. They already came out with the opening seven line. Seven and a half. And it's, already, and it's already gone up to eight. Wow. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit of uh, some traction, right? Or is that a reflection of how trending a little bit Auburn of both. is? A little yeah. bit of both. A little bit, I, mean, I, think they're, I think both teams are trending in opposite directions. For yeah, sure. Yeah. That's my point. But, like, they're not going to give you a seven and a, They're not going to give LSU yeah. a seven and a half, eight point cushion on the road if they don't believe that they, they're going to be able to do that, right? right. And so yeah. you go there. Let's say you go to Auburn. It's still a, it's still a money decision for right. line makers. So. Right. You go to Auburn. You take care of business. You beat them by two, three touchdowns. Beat them by double digits. You, like, and you look good doing it. You come back next week. Probably going to be close to being ranked in the top 25. You're going to have Tennessee at 11 o'clock game. You don't think the boys are coming in at home pissed off because they have to play one, they have to play an 11 o'clock game. They feel a little disrespected that way. They're playing a top 10, maybe a top five team at that time. I mean, Tennessee's off this week. So, you know, depending on what happens ahead of them, they may be in the top five in the country. Coming to LSU, playing an 11 o'clock game, you don't think the boys feel feel disrespect? You don't think they're going to have a lot of confidence after, hey, we won – we lost a, a bad game the first I'll game, just, and we won four straight. I'll just put it to you like this. For the group of boys that's in that locker room right now, they could play that game at 8 a.m., coach, and they'd be ready to go. No doubt. Right? Meaning, like, you know, you get to this point in the schedule. They, If they go on the road and take care of business this week and you bring a top-10 team in here, they're going to be ready to go. They'll be ready to play. Right. You, can, they, you can play at Here's the time. thing. You go ahead and you somehow you get through that Tennessee game and you win. People are going to start talking about, man, this team's real. What do you have to say? They then? might beat Bama. Oh, oh my God. Have, this what team, do you have to say then? This team's, this team's better than eight wins. This team may win 10. Oh, my God. They just beat a top five team, right? But that's how easy it can happen in the season, right? You go there and you start building confidence because it's not because of lack of talent. Maybe we don't have as much depth, and maybe we don't have the guys that we want to have, but the guys on the field right now are proving to you that they are talented enough to win any game that they, they get on. I think the uh... – I think the biggest, the biggest, biggest like task for a new coach coming in is to one get people to buy into what you're saying. I, I think it's pretty obvious that they've done a good job of getting people to you know all walk in the right direction or the same direction, right? And then now when you start having success and people start paying attention to you, which these next two weeks are going to give them the opportunity to do. How do you keep them hungry and keep them working and keep them on the same right. things you got them to buy into from right. the start, right? Like those are the two biggest things because that's what's you know that, that's where you're gonna be. You sit here and you take two W's the next two weeks. We're sitting here looking at a five and one team who's probably gonna be somewhere around top fifteen, right? Right. Right. So that's you know that's that's the teetering point and how big these next two weeks are for them. But that's what you're looking at right now. And no if doubt. you sit here and say we have a five and one team who just beat a top ten, maybe top five team in Tennessee going into it, you're gonna tell me they don't have a chance to go to Florida and win? You're gonna tell me they don't have a chance to come back home and beat Ole Miss? You're gonna tell me they don't have a chance to beat Alabama? You're crazy. If you're gonna to continue to progress offensively like the way they've progressed, and you're gonna allow your quarterback to sit in the if he's gonna say, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be stubborn to the point of I'm gonna sit in the pocket, even if I even if I take a couple more what did you do up there? That's yeah, from no, the that's chat. I wanted to th- I, I, I just, love that. Yeah, I just I figured out how to do this. It's a little wow. V-Mix social. So <laughs> anybody that puts anything in the chat, I can show it to, so I you don't have that. to keep up with it. Yeah, because I, I, I thought that Brandon had it actually like a – Thanks, Brandon. Good. Yeah, Brandon Reese. I got a couple more that got to fire up there. But Let's go. But he was interested to see what the offense will do in a hostile environment because LSU hasn't played a – has they played a true road no, game? No, they yet? haven't. No, they, they haven't. haven't. And I agree. That's, that's why I think this Auburn game is such a good test. I think the way that our the SEC schedule – is set up for LSU this year. You had a really good test in Mississippi State earlier in the year, right? At home, you had the ability to say, okay, how many, adju- what adjustments did I make after the Florida State game? You had the Florida State game, we didn't look great, right? We almost won. All, everybody knows how it happened. Next game, you play Southern, okay, a little tune up game. You know, get some, get some, you know, confidence, do some things. Then you play against Mississippi State, who is good. It was was up and coming, and they were supposed to be. They were better than us, supposedly better than us. They were favored. 
you get to play that team at home. But it wasn't a team that everybody looked at and said, oh, there's no way we can win. But they had a complicated offense, so it was going to test our defense, right? It was going to test our offense enough to say who can, you know, if they make enough improvements, they go ahead and they win by two touchdowns, right? They win by 15 points. Then you go ahead and you play New Mexico. Same thing. Okay, let's get some a little more adjustments going on in with, uh, within our team. Let's, let, let's see how we can improve, tune up. Then we go to Auburn on the road in a hostile environment on a team who is, um, you know, traditionally has played – they have played very tight games. They're not very high-scoring games. They usually are very, you know, one, two possession games. Now we get to go there, but we're favored by eight points, right? So – we get to ease into this schedule and get to test us a little bit differently until you start playing the big dogs, right? Because you're about to go through the gauntlet of Tennessee, Arkansas, Alabama, A&M, all of those teams, Ole Miss. Like, you're about to go through the gauntlet. I think the way our SEC schedule has set up, it is going to be beneficial for us. Like, this is a good test. This is another good coaching point. I mean, it's a test where you don't have to play perfect to win. But you want to play, you want to go out there and make sure. Truth be make told, a this is the beginning of the gauntlet. Like, let's just, yeah, right, right. Right. They might not be a good team right now, but they got some dudes yeah, running around. Yeah, right. No, you're right. Yeah, and this game's always close. Like, 100%. Man, like, so, like, just, close. Truth be told, this is the beginning of the gauntlet. Right, I would say I would just say right. Mississippi State, but this being able to, but you don't have you don't what, have a break. What, reason why I'm saying, like reason, later, yeah, but. the reason why I'm not saying Mississippi State is not because of who they are, but because you had the break in between. Yeah, the gauntlet meaning you got Auburn, Tennessee, Florida, Ole Miss, Alabama, Arkansas before you That's get to another good. break. That's pretty good. Because well, it's right there. Uh, <laughs> <you get that. laughs> I was like, damn, right that's there. pretty good. Yeah, it's right there. It's pretty solid. But like, but my point is, is like that's what I mean by the gauntlet. Like you don't you don't have any more breaks. Like you don't you don't get right. to come up and breathe and get some air. We get a bye week. No, no, yeah. I don't. That's not a break because yeah. you're still in it. You're like yeah. you get what I'm saying. So I, I mean, for me, like, what, what's the biggest challenge you think of going into a hostile environment, hostile environment, and playing another team? Communication. Yeah, just communication. Well, also my my point is, I mean, with with well, how the game's going, with how they're feeling about Harson. Are we it sure it's going to be a typical Auburn environment, or do you think it doesn't matter? It's LSU. That's it's, it's, it's a be six o'clock game. It'll be it'll be it'll be uh, it'll be pretty rowdy. You only me, get eight, you only get eight of those a year. Yeah. Right? To it'll, my it'll to fun. answer your question, like obviously communication is a big thing, right, in the hostile environment. But and you can you can attest to this because you've done it in the in the SEC on the football field when you're going into a visitor's stadium, right. And you're playing, and you're the under, and you're the you're the away team, and you're going. And everybody's against you, right? Well, things start to speed up a little bit faster than you would like. You're in a kind of out of your comfort zone. You're not normal. You're not normally there. A lot of new guys. So for me, it's like I want to see. This is where I think Brian Kelly makes is where you see the difference. And Brian Kelly is able to bring these guys and say, "Hey, let's slow it down. Nothing changes." The venue may change. The colors that we're playing against may change. But we're going to do the same shit that we've been doing since we made these adjustments. So the rowdier it gets and the less, like, even if you can't communicate as well as you want, let's, let's calm this thing down and let's, be, let's, let's not speed this game up. To me, that's the thing that I want to see is this, us be able to handle that. Not, I don't want to see us throw for four. I mean, obviously, I would love to see that, but that's not what I'm looking for. Like, if we can slow it down, and you can do the things that you practiced all week and you've practiced the last two weeks and you don't allow things to speed up, I think we won by two touchdowns at least. I what think, about you? No, I agree. Like, I think when you go into situations like this, like you said, like, communications, it's key, right? Well, that starts where? From the top. Practice. From the top. You do it in practice, but it comes from the top, right? So I think once again, with this coaching staff, the way you've only seen this team ascend, like how well are they going to coach them up this week to be able to get them in there, to be able to go into a hostile environment, to be able to perform seamlessly without hiccups all over the place, without not being able to communicate, all that stuff. It's huge, right? Because if I can communicate, we're playing the same game now. There's no speeding up. <laughs> like right. what, what, what sped up? I heard you. Oh, I saw you. I know what that means. And I know what we're doing. And